Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. The people you are about to meet are innocent. Uh, only their faces have been changed to make them look real. Now, tonight, I would like to take a picture of my audience so that all of you nice people and all the rest of you, too, all over the country, gather around your television set and look this way and smile, please. Say cheese. <laughs> See, I promised my mother that I would get a snapshot of my audience. Now, this is for Mom. So, everybody, cheese. <laughs> oh, in case anybody's wondering who I happen to be, I happen to be George Goebel. And it's kind of interesting how I happen to be George Goebel, too, because uh, a number of years ago, my father, Herman Goebel, met my mother, Lillian. And, uh, well... I guess you know how it happened. <laughs> Jeez, everybody. Now, just look this way. Now, there we are. Now, look at the dirty birdie. <laughs> Jeez. There. I... Oh, darn it. The picture was ruined. Plum ruined. Some clown in Oklahoma City moved. So there you are And here I am And here's the show The George Goebel Show Starring George Goebel With his guest, Miss Faye Emerson Pretty Turkey Peggy King John Scott Trotter and his orchestra Because coming into your living rooms once again is the man who is coming into your living rooms once again. The star of our show, George Goebel. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I, I just wanted to see how many of you people can read. <laughs> now then, the other night, Alice and I were sitting around the house. Uh, oh, Alice is my wife. I married her, you see. <laughs> and the reason I married her is because I like her mother so much. I would have married her mother, except that by the time I met Alice, her mother was already taken. <laughs> but that's the way it goes. The good ones are always snapped up first. But I digress. Do you digress? <laughs> I digress. But anyway, like I started to say, Alice and I were talking about having our home redecorated. I say... We were talking. It wasn't we. It was she. She was talking. I was digressing. <laughs> She'd say, George, which is what she always calls me at the beginning of an argument. And this was the beginning of a dandy. <laughs> Believe thee me. This was, uh, well, this is one of the best arguments we ever had. And I say the best, you know, because I won. <laughs> See, I, uh... Well, now, one isn't exactly the right word, either. Uh, lost would be a better word. <laughs> See, I lost because Alice went home to her mother. I never get a chance to go home to her mother. And I like her mother, too. I would have married her mother. But by the time... That sounds like the telephone. Will you excuse me, please? Or better yet, follow me. <laughs> Yes. Mm-hmm. Yeah, well, I, I can understand. Will you hold on for just a second? There's somebody at the door. Hold on. Yes? Is this the residence of Mr. and Mrs. Goble? It is. You are Mr. Goble? I aren't Mrs. Goble. <laughs> I'm with the firm of Cheltenham, Chillingham, and uh, Hink. Oh, yes, the interior decorators. Yes, the Sydney, 
K.W. Boatwright, A.K.C. American Kennel Club. I also breed dogs. I'm an Airedale <laughs> Foncier. An Airedale Foncier. Well, you're not going to bump into many Airedales any Foncier than you are. <laughs> Look, would you excuse me? There's somebody on the telephone. I was talking when you came in, and only t and uh, listen, just uh, make yourself comfortable. Here. <laughs> now I'll admit that this is no Buckingham Palace, but at least we own it outright. Me and the Bank of America. <laughs> Hello. Yeah, some clown comes busting in here for no reason at all, and he. Yeah, well, what are you going to do? Well, I understand. It's one of those, uh... Hold on just a second. <laughs> Mr. Boatwright, what are you doing? I am not doing, my dear man. I am undoing. <laughs> well, will you kindly redo what you have just undid? <laughs> and let's don't be wreaking havoc in my humble hovel. <laughs> you not only arouse my peak, you may well throw the bank into a sniff. <laughs> Hello. No, I'm not mad at you, but this... Yeah. Well, that's the way it... Um, but, but, but... But there's something I think you really ought to know. Uh-huh. Well, it's not that so much, but you've got the wrong number. <laughs> You know what? They wanted the fire department. <laughs> Their house is burning pretty good. Now then, sir, let us get to your problem. You called me here to decorate, did you not? That I did call you here to, for. And uh, you stand prepared to listen with some degree of respect to my suggestions, do oh, you not? Oh, I do, I do, do, do. Yes, I do. My dear chap, whatever is your idea, surely not French provincial, or early American, or Louis Cannes, or even uh, primitive modern? Now look here, Mr. Boatwright. Some of these things you've been pounding on are priceless pieces. I'd like you to take a look at that painting over there. This painting was painted by my nine-year-old son, Greg. Indeed. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it is an original. <laughs> yeah, he calls it the Mona Lisa. And you know, I will never figure out how he dreamed up a title like that. <laughs> well then, my dear Mr. Goebel, perhaps he can help the critics solve a problem that's been worrying them for centuries. Why is the Mona Lisa smiling? Well, the way Greg explains it, <laughs> she had just finished saying cheese. <laughs> My dear Mr. Goebel, this will probably come as a terrible shock to you, but this picture is world famous, and your son did not paint it. No. <laughs> Mr. Boatwright, you have just broken a father's heart. <laughs> Goebel, my dear chap, let's forget pictures. Leave everything to me. I work intuitively. This house speaks to me. Open me up, it calls. Tear down my drapes, it yells. Let me breathe, it sobs. I want to live. <laughs> there, there, old girl, pull yourself together. I had no idea that Goebel Gables was so emotional. My dear Mr. Goebel, houses are living things. They're not only glass and brick and mortar and paint and paper and shingles. They are more, much more. Sure they are. They are taxes and mortgages and bills and uh, leaky faucets. Oh, I tell you true, it takes a heap of heapin' To make a hutch a home. <laughs> Wadsworth. <laughs> Come on over here and sit down for just a second, will you? I want to be frank with you, Mr. Boatwright. 
All I really wanted in the first place is for some clooper to come out here and splash a little paint around and slap up a little wallpaper and call it a day. Mr. Goebel, if I confide in you, will you honor my confidence? Heck yes. <laughs> Now listen, out in the car, I got some paint and paper, and I'll knock this job off for you for less than 40 bucks. Now, now that's giving you a break. Now, it. don't, don't get excited. What well, a fella has to think a thing like this over. Somebody comes busting it, and you got a deal, buddy. <laughs> Crazy daddy, oh, well. Crazy daddy, oh. And he was, too, that daddy, oh. Crazy. And I don't mean cool. Are you hip? I mean, this old boy was just flat, solid, good, deluxe, American, plain, crazy. Oh, that's your cue, John. Play something. That was very good. Now, that means... That means that that's the end of that episode, you see. Now, the next episode comes when Alice comes home and sees what this $40 decorator did to our home... And I feel that it's only fair to tell you this will not be a pleasant scene. <laughs> As a matter of fact, all the children and squeamish adults better leave the room. <laughs> and inasmuch as I feel that I fall into at least one of those categories, I better leave too. Oh. Uncle John, would you come over here for just a second? I need a little yes, advice. George. I was just thinking maybe we better cut that scene completely. I don't believe the world is ready for it. Oh, you know it, too. Yes, I do. <laughs> yes, I do. You know, I think the best thing for me to do is go pick out a real nice present for Alice to get her mind off of that wallpaper. That's a very good idea, George. Why don't you consult a professional gift counselor? There's an excellent one at the Wiltshire Beverly. Oh, there's a fancy store if I ever saw... They tell me that even their shoplifters drive up in Jaguar. <laughs> George, all you do is take the freeway to El Centro... And then you turn right, and you follow the old streetcar tracks till you come to the new streetcar tracks, and that is Cannon Drive, I believe. Then you take a left on Wiltshire and a right on Beverly, and there you are. And here I am. <laughs> and here's a shortcut. Now look at me. I beg your pardon. Uh, look, I just came in to get... What's the matter? Time for the commercial. Say, that's my watch. Look, you give me my watch back or I'll turn you into the police. You watch this commercial or I'll turn you into the sponsor. You watch this commercial or I'll turn you into a pumpkin. <laughs> Hello again, ladies and gentlemen and pumpkins. <laughs> you may be very happy to know that I got my watch back and two of his. <laughs> See, I've always been the kind of a fellow... Hi, George. Hi, Peg. What are you doing here at uh, Beverly Wilshire? Oh, uh, I brought my mommy down here to see Santa Claus. Does your mama believe in Santa Claus? Oh, she does in this one. He's my daddy. Oh. <laughs> See, he plays Santa Claus here every year. Well, like I always say, Peggy, there's no business like show business. <laughs> now, after all, we don't want to fool anybody here tonight. Everybody knows that you're here to sing a song, so rather than fool them, why don't you just flat solid stand right here and sing it? Here? Mm -hmm. Okay, I'll stand here and I'll try to sing it real solid and not flat. Isn't she cute? <laughs> she is just a teeny bundle of... Mm. <laughs> Did you say I've got a lot to learn? Well, don't think I'm trying not to learn Since this is the perfect spot to learn 
black board high above you if a shooting star goes by I'll use that star to write I love you a thousand times across the sky one thing isn't very clear my love should the teacher stand so near my love graduation's almost here my love teach me teach me to That, uh, that was real musical. And you know that while you were singing, we had the cameraman take a lot of real close-ups of your face. Did you? Uh-huh. This is in keeping with my policy to beautify living rooms all over the country. <laughs> oh, well, thank you, George. And you're sweet. No, I'm late. I have to pick up a present for Alice. She's coming home tomorrow. Really? Yeah, she had a fight with her mother. <laughs> so she's coming home to me. Oh, gee, why don't you use the, uh, you know, the counselor here, the gift counselor. They've got a real good one. Really? Mm -hmm. Thanks, Peg. You're a heap of help. Longfellow. <laughs> good afternoon, young man. Good afternoon. Do you wish gift counseling service? Well, now, I thought I might have a go at it. <laughs> Do be seated. Now, the um, lady in question, now. Is it your mother? No. Your sister? No. A very good friend? Mercy, no. <laughs> Happens to be my wife. How quaint. Oh, then you... You know her. <laughs> Would you mind describing her? No, I don't mind describing her if you promise that my description doesn't get back to her. Well, what are some of her outstanding characteristics? Well, she's a heavy talker. <laughs> uh, does she use perfume? Well, only as a last resort. First, she cries. <laughs> I know the type. I think I have something here that'll do the trick. <clears throat> and it's uh, only a hundred dollars an ounce. Do <laughs> you have a special price on a fifth? <laughs> uh, well, just what price range did you have in mind now? Well, I saw something down the street the other day that sort of tickled my fancy. It was a, a do-it-yourself perfume kit. <laughs> and it included a 100-pound bale of dried rose petals. I think they're nice. And uh, it included three ounces of musk oil and a quarter of a pound of ambergris. That's from the sperm whale, you know. Yes, my hobby is breeding them. <laughs> Are you serious about getting a present for your wife? No. <laughs> I came in here to see if I could get my parking ticket violated. Now, see here. Mr. Um... Goble. George Goble. That's my name. My wife's name is Alice. Alice Goble, to be specific. Ah, now that is a clue. The name Alice does evoke a very definite image. A, a simple girl, a sweet, plain, and unadorned woman. Well, no, I wouldn't say that. <laughs> She's had her ears pierced. Well, then, she wears earrings. No, she just claims that it's cooler in the summertime. <laughs> well, maybe it would help if I, I showed you some things. 
Oh, have you thought of getting your wife some, um, some diaphanous lingerie for the um, intimacy of your boudoir? Are you trying to make trouble, buddy? <laughs> Why not try the romantic approach? Why not get us something feminine and personal? Let us show you some of our things. I'm sure you'll find this to suit your face. Well, Mr. Goebel, what did you think of our negligee? Is that what that was? <laughs> Perhaps you'd better take another look. Perhaps I had better take one more look, because it's not going to hurt anything, and it's not going to take long, and I haven't got anything special to do, and I don't believe she's going to go any place this afternoon in that outfit. <laughs> ain't you? <laughs> I didn't mean anything wrong. Would you mind walking a little, please? <clears throat> Would you mind walking back? Would you mind stopping? <laughs> well, do you think Alice will like this? Alice who? <laughs> Well, I'm sorry, but we can't help you. You just haven't given us anything to go on. I don't know anything about your Alice, her likes and her dislikes, or her favorite sports, or her hobbies. Now, you've just given us none of these. You have helped me, ma'am. You have given me a great idea, and I want to thank you very much. Thank you ever so much. A lot of good luck to you, sister. <laughs> you know... It was the word hobbies that did it, because then I knew just what to buy, so I went out and bought a new set of golf clubs. Now, Alice doesn't play golf. Her hobby is saving stamps, green ones. And when you buy a, an expensive set of golf clubs, they give you more stamps than you can shake a niblick at. And if you don't mind now, I would like to go out and try my new clubs, but I'll be right back. Caddy. Again? The George Goble Show is being brought to you by the makers of Pet. This time I still got my watch, but I lost my caddy. <laughs> but as the French say, cherchez la femme. You've heard them say that many times, I know oh, you... Excuse me, George, I hate to interrupt, but I've got to catch a plane for Oklahoma City in a few minutes. Well, Faye, I'd sure like to tell you how much fun it's been having you as our gift counselor here tonight. Well, I've enjoyed it, too, very much, George. And, and you know something? Now I know what I want for Christmas. Oh, really? What's that? You, George. Well, uh, that's fine, but I've been taken. Well, don't worry about it, George. It happens to the best of us. Yeah, I, before you leave, I'd like you to meet a friend of mine, Mr. Tannen. Miss Emerson, may I present Mr. Julius Tannen, one of the all-time great monologists of the American theater. Glad to meet you. Thank you. Mr. Tannen, may I say that it's been a real thrill and an honor for me to work with you. Thank you, George. You're very kind to old folks. Miss Emerson, may I, please? Now, he's not so old. 
He thinks pretty good. But I see by the old clock on the wall that it's time for us to be leaving you. And until we see you next week when our guest will be Edward Everett Horton, this is your old friend, Lonesome George, leaving you with this word of advice. Do your Christmas shopping early before breakfast if possible. So long, mate. <laughs> This is Del Charber saying goodnight for the George Goble Show, a Gomalco production.